one of the things that we're going to see as our market evolves is much more of a shared kind of model where people are working together more than anything before. We've got to get rid of these silos. And I'll get into a lot more detail, but that kind of thing is destructive. It increases cost, does not improve patient outcomes. We've got to think like a system. And you know, for us as physicians, this should not be a hard thing. I mean, man, what was the first thing we learned in medical school? You study the organs. The organs don't act independently. They act together as a system, et cetera. Why can't we kind of conceptualize medicine in the same way? And that's no surprise then when we look at the media and we see stuff like this. I know it's a little hard to read from the back, but check this out here. Business Week, medical guesswork. From heart surgery to prostate care, the medical industry knows little about what actually works. Time Magazine, what doctors hate about hospitals. This was a good one, US News and World Report. Who needs doctors? Your future physician might not be an MD, and you might be better off. That's the kind of stuff that we're seeing in the press. So no wonder there's a lot of skepticism. No wonder there's a lot of doubt as to whether we as a profession can make the changes to do it right. But I do want to say from the perspective of quality, we've had a really good run these last couple years. We've seen quality and safety improve in our hospitals more than we ever have before. And there's three critical reasons that I want to get into in some detail as we talk tonight. First, the rise of consumer scrutiny of data, data transparency. You know, one of the interesting things I really thought about doing tonight, and I, I didn't do this, but I do it when I go to a lot of other facilities. I would say something to you like, you know, until this afternoon, I have never set foot in your facility before. I've never been there. But let me show you what I can learn about each one of you and each one of your facilities sitting on my computer in Austin, Texas, 1,500 miles away. And I do a little 15 minute, this is your life. You know, showing the health grades data, showing the core measures, showing the H caps, and all these other things. Well, what makes it powerful? Not that you haven't seen it before. I mean, I hope you have. But here's some complete stranger, some dude from Texas that's never been here before, that can give you a 20-minute presentation about all the things going on in your hospital. That's data transparency. And that's one of the things that's going to truly change our field, as I'm going to show you soon, faster than anything else. Second is many of our effective quality initiatives we already know. We have best practices for many of our common diseases. Many we don't, but many we do. Our problem is not lack of knowledge, it's lack of implementation, it's lack of execution. Even though we've had best practices in heart failure and pneumonia and orthopedic cases, on and on and on, we really have not seen those brought into our hospitals as much as we should have. Our problem is not lack of knowledge, it's lack of implementation. And a, and a story that I sometimes use is uh, Bobby Knight once at Indiana, when he was particularly trounced. And a press conference the next day, they asked him, what do you think of your team's execution? You know what he said? He said, after last night, I think I'm kind of in favor of it. <laughs> All right, our, our problem, and I'll get into this in more detail, is simply implementing the things we already know. And then finally, more and more payers are willing to pay for performance. And I want to put a little reality on that thing. Pay for performance is not we're going to make more money because we're doing better. All right, we kind of thought that a few years ago. Remember, even for hospitals, they, CMS said the top decile will get 2% more. So all our bean counters going, oh, cool, 2% more. Well, that kind of evaporated, didn't it? And it's not even a break even. Let me tell you something. Pay for performance is our only way of partially recouping some of the cuts that we're going to get. And right now, when you look at pay for performance, at least for hospitals by 2014, there's anywhere between 7 and 10% at risk. I see a similar pattern for physicians. So we've got to be prepared and learn how to do this. So the whole idea of data transparency, evidence-based practices, paying for performance, kind of unlike what this guy is telling his cat here, we do have to think outside the box a little bit. And we do have to look at different ways of doing a field that we've done for a long, long time.